The GB 2.0 is an upgrade kit to our gearing system. This new design eliminates the stripping of the gear. It includes one paddle wheel, washers for shimming, a glass-filled thermoplastic gear, a drive shaft, one motor mounting plate and screws, a lock washer and nut. You will need a number two flathead screwdriver, a number two Phillips screwdriver, a four millimeter Allen key, a 10 millimeter and 13 millimeter wrench, vice grips, pliers, and a 5 8 comparable socket. So the first step to installing your GB 2.0 kit is going to be to remove your grinder casing. First, rotate your hopper counterclockwise until it stops and lift it off to remove it. Take out the rubber gasket. Lift out your ring burr and holder and put these parts to the side. Next, you're going to want to grab the knob on the side and grab it real tight and pull it, wiggle it a little bit directly off until it slides off. Sometimes it can be on there really tight and you have to use a pair of pliers, maybe with a rag wrapped in it so you don't mark up your knob. Now on the Preciso, it also has a micro adjustment knob that we need to take off. The way to do that is take your flathead screwdriver and get it underneath and we're going to pry up, but at the same time we're going to press down on the inside on the black collar. So we're going to go boop, go shooting off. Make sure you get that, we're going to need that later. Next we need to remove the case of the Preciso and this can be the hardest part just because it's hard to see what you're doing. Take your flathead screwdriver and you're going to insert it in this gap between the metal base and the black plastic housing. Stick it down in there vertically and then rock it back and you can slide the tip of the screwdriver under the black plastic. At this point you want to push up a little bit and pivot it forward and they can be a little bit stubborn so just try this exact motion a couple times and you can see my gap got a little bit bigger on this side. What That means that I've unlocked both of these clips. There's four clips total, two on this side. We're gonna roll it over and do the same motion where you put it in vertically, rock it back, push up, vertically, rock it back, push up. Now I have the gap on both sides of the grinder, so I stand it upright and I carefully wiggle on it, pull on it until the casing removes. Once the casing is removed, Click your adjustment ring a little bit clockwise. This will make the safety micro switch easier to pull off of the two pegs. Go ahead and dangle that off the back. Now we're gonna remove the gearbox assembly from the black chassis. There's three Phillips screws that hold it on. Go ahead and remove those three. Once the three Phillips screws are removed, you can lift your gearbox assembly away from the chassis and unplug it from the circuit board. We can go ahead and put the chassis to the side and turn our attention to the gearbox assembly. Grab your micro adjustment arm and you're going to want to go clockwise with it until it stops. When at the point where it stops, the whole adjustment ring will lift off. Put that to the side. Be careful not to lose the small black detent which makes the clicking noise when you adjust your hopper. Put that to the side as well. Now we're getting down to the internals of the gearbox. There's four Phillips screws that hold the motor to the gearbox. Go ahead and take those out. Once these four screws are removed, you can pull your motor and motor plate away from the gearbox. You can see in here that this is the metal gear. This is a GB 1.0. It has a 10 millimeter left hand thread nut on the drive shaft. Go ahead and put the gearbox to the side and we'll take care of the motor plate first. We're going to remove the two Phillips screws that hold the motor plate to the motor. Between the metal motor plate and the motor, there's this rubber spacer. 
You need to make sure this is discarded as well. This does not go back on to the GB 2.0 assembly. So go ahead and throw that away. <laughs> throw away your metal plate. Take the lock washers off the screws. Save the two lock washers. Throw away the two Phillips screws. So now we have a motor with no motor plate. This is where we're going to use our first new part from the GB 2.0 kit, the black motor plate. To install, oh, be careful about the magnetized motor. Sometimes screws will get picked up on it and then get inside the motor and cause problems. So keep those at a distance from the motor. Back to the motor plate for installation. You can see the motor slides up through here and then it has a bushing for the end of the drive shaft. You want to turn the motor until the wire is just a little bit past 12 o'clock on the motor plate and you'll see the holes appear for the screws. You can see the wire is a little bit past 12 o'clock and when those two holes have appeared you get to use the two new screws, hex head screws from your GB 2.0 kit along with those washers that we just saved from the old motor plate. When installing these hex head screws, you'll note that I took care to use the two holes that are in line with the motor shaft and the bushing so that all four of these components make a straight line. Installing them this way will give the best alignment with the gear. These screws should be snug they don't need to be very tight, the lock washers do a good job. Now our motor, motor plate assembly is complete. Let's turn our attention back to the gearbox assembly. Turn the gearbox assembly upside down. We need to remove the 10 millimeter reverse thread nut. To do so, get your pliers and your 10 millimeter box and wrench. You can grab the neck of the metal gear with your pliers and hold it still. Use the 10 millimeter nut wrench on the nut and rotate it clockwise to loosen. Remove the 10 millimeter nut, discard it. Remove the lock washer, discard it. Now we need to get the drive shaft punched through the drive gear. At home, the easiest way to do this is to use a roll of tape uh, very tough plastic glass, something of that nature that you can put the gearbox on top of and be able to hammer onto the drive shaft. You can use a hammer to get the old drive shaft off. I'm going to see if I can get it off just with the back of the screwdriver. And you can see the burr shaft assembly has dropped out. I can now remove the metal drive gear, GB 1.0. Take care to remove any washers that are sticking to the gear. We will need these during reassembly with the GB 2.0 kit. But the metal gear itself, discard. Another washer to save. Now I have an empty gearbox. There's no gear, burr, or drive shaft in this gearbox. However, you can see there is a brass bushing in the middle of the gearbox. If this comes out on your grinder, make sure it goes back in. It usually does not come out. I'm going to put this gearbox to the side and turn my attention to removing the burr from the shaft. So first we're going to pull the paddle wheel away from the burr in the shaft. Inside the paddle wheel are going to be washers. These washers dictate how close the lower burr rides to the upper burr, in essence at what grind range your unit will operate at. Take care to keep these washers. We'll need them for reassembly of the GB 2.0. The paddle wheel, you can keep or discard. There is a new one included with the GB 2.0. Now the burr and the drive shaft. We must separate them. The easiest way I've found to do this is to take a rag in my left hand and put the sharp burr in the rag. I can hold it pretty tightly like this. Get a pair of pliers and grab the hexagonal portion of the drive shaft. Now because this is a left hand thread burr, we're going to turn it clockwise to break it free. It did take significant force, but once broken free, it is finger tight. I can remove my cone burr, 
from the old drive shaft. The old drive shaft we're going to discard. Cone burr we're going to reinstall. So let's start putting together our GB 2.0. Grab your cone burr and your drive shaft and take the wider end of the drive shaft, put it in the bottom of the cone burr and rotate it counterclockwise to thread it together. Go ahead and tighten it until it's finger tight. When it's all the way tightened, it will not quite be flush with the top of the burr. There will be a little bit of a gap there. Go ahead and place the cone burr drive shaft assembly upside down on your table. Grab the paddle wheel, the next part of the installation. On the inside of the paddle wheel, there's a little felt ring. Make sure it ends up in there. And the paddle wheel has two male pegs on it that fit into two female holes on the bottom side of the cone burr. Go ahead and slide your paddle wheel on and make sure that those two male pegs find their home in the female holes so that everything sits flat. Next we're going to set up the shimming of the cone burr. For the Preciso I recommend 3 millimeters or 2.75 millimeters of shims underneath the paddle wheel. 3 millimeters is always going to give you an espresso fine grind. 2.75 will give you a good espresso grind and a little bit more headroom on your coarse side. I'm going to go ahead and set this one up with three millimeters because I prefer to do it that way. So there's three types of washers that we use in our grinders. We have thick ones that are just blatantly th thick if you compare them to any of the others. They should be easy to pick out. The other two are hard to discern from one another because one is a half a millimeter thick, one is a quarter millimeter thick. The easy test to see which is which is to try and bend it. This one does not bend readily. I could bend it if I used extreme force, but it does not bend readily. This one bends very readily. I can easily, I can do it with my pinky finger even. I can bend it quite easily. The one that's bendy is a quarter millimeter. The one that seems the same thickness but isn't bendy is a half a millimeter. And then we got the big thick one here at 1.5 millimeters. So I'm going to use one big thick one, 1 1.5 plus one, two medium ones that were already in the grinder, 2.5, and my Gearbox 2.0 kit came with a couple of extra washers. Looks like I'm going to use two of the skinny ones also, so 2.5 plus 0.25 plus 0.25. I have three millimeters washers total beneath the paddle wheel and the cone bear. Now I have the top half of the Gearbox assembly ready to slide into the Gearbox housing. I like to do this step with the gearbox upside down to make sure that those paddle wheel male pegs don't come out of the female holes in the cone burr. So just flip your gearbox upside down, shish kebab it on there, and set it down on the table. Once again, your cone burr will be on the table. And now we can go ahead and install the bottom half of the gearbox. The entire drive shaft assembly has four millimeters of slop. We've used three millimeters on the top side. So in theory, there's one more millimeter of slop in the drive shaft. However, manufacturing tolerances and also the fact that we need this assembly to spin means that we can't use a full four millimeters. For each grinder, it's a little bit different, but since I have three millimeters on the top, I'm going to try 0.75 millimeters on the bottom. So I'm going to use one of these non-bendy thin ones, one bendy thin one. That one's not bendy. That one's bendy. So now I have two washers on here to hopefully eliminate the vertical slot, which is what we're going to check in just a moment. Next we're going to press the gear on. If you look at the gear, one side has a shoulder, the other side does not. You want the shoulder facing, I guess up at this point, but when in the grinder the shoulder will be facing towards the ground. So go ahead, and the top of my clumber is still on the table so I know the paddle wheel is happy. I can push it on. This one is not being easily pushed on, so I'm going to get a socket. This one's a 5.8 socket. Any socket that fits over the shaft will work. And then I am once again going to use my screwdriver as a hammer here. And now, I used 0.75 millimeters on the bottom side, and that was kind of a guess. So now we need to do a guess and check. You can see the gear spins. I'm only using one finger. It doesn't spin like a skateboard wheel, but it does spin readily. And also, if I pull up on this, there is no clicking noise. There is no vertical play 
there's no vertical play in this whole assembly, which means that my 0.75 on this side was a good complement to three millimeters on the top side and it's happy fit. If there's a little bit of vertical slop, it's not a problem. If the gear is not able to be spun, then you do have a problem and you wanna go in there and change your shimming. And on that note, if you have to take this gearbox assembly apart, make sure you use a wood mallet or plastic surface to hammer this out. If you use a metal hammer, you're gonna ruin the tip of the shaft and it won't fit into the bushing on the motor plate. That's a little bit much for right now. Let's just go back to reassembly here. So I have my gear, I pushed it on all the way. We're gonna get the lock washer, put on my lock washer. We're gonna get my 13 millimeter nut and it's a regular hand thread, so clockwise to tighten it. I get it finger tight and then I hold the gear steady with my thumb and you don't need to get it much tighter, but maybe 90 degrees. See, I didn't even use a socket. I just tighten it with pliers. It just needs to be snug. The lock washer does a good job. And once it is on there, you can see my gear still spins. There's still no clicking noise, no vertical slop of the assembly. Let's finish this baby. So the gearbox and the motor only go together one way. You can see there's a cutout on the motor plate that complements the bulge on the gearbox. And also the top is rounded, flat on one side, flat, rounded. This drive shaft tip rides in this bushing on the motor plate. So let's put them together. So you can see the drive shaft tip is in the bushing. Sometimes when you're putting it together, you'll get about right here and it won't want to go on. You can see that everything's lined up, but it's not quite a good fit. And if that happens, just gently tap it with a screwdriver. And once it's popped all the way on, it should be happy fit. So now that I have my motor plate mocked up, I'm going to get the four screws that were holding down the motor plate originally and install them to hold down the new motor plate. Now I have an assembled motor plate, motor, gearbox assembly with a GB 2.0 gear kit installed. We can go ahead and put it back in our chassis. Before you put it back in your chassis, make sure you have your chute gasket. It's a square silicone gasket and it has one side that looks kind of funny and is a little bit skinnier than the others. And this goes towards the motor. The funny looking side goes towards the motor. So put that there and you kind of have to hold it with your finger while you're putting the gearbox assembly onto the chassis housing. And you can see it's set in there nicely. My two wires are over the chute. I can go ahead now, plug my motor into the circuit board. Make sure it fully plugs in. If it half plugs in, it's not gonna run. At this point, we're gonna put in the three Phillips screws that hold the gearbox assembly to the chassis. Your grinder may have through bolts with tiny little nuts for two of the screws, or all three might not. They might just be regular screws. Either way, we need to get all three screws back installed. And you can see here my wire is outside of the screw hole. It would assemble fine, but it might get caught up on the case when we go to snap the case on. So go ahead and make sure your wire is on the inside of the screw hole so that it's held in. And then I can go ahead and put in my third screw. Okie dokie. So now we're ready to reinstall our adjustment ring. Okay, now we're gonna reinstall our adjustment ring. 
first thing you're going to need to do is get that little black detent that I asked you not to lose earlier. If you look at it carefully, it has one side that's flat and the other side is pointed like the roof of a house. We want to put the pointed side up and the flat side against the spring in the column on the gearbox. And it's going to be perched here precariously. It'll easily fall out right now. So our, there are two components to installing the adjustment ring, two things that we need to line up. One is you can see on the adjustment ring, 180 degrees around it, there are these serrations. These serrations coupled with the house shaped detent are what give the clicking noise when you adjust the grind. So when we install the adjustment ring, we need to make sure that some of these serrations are over the black detent. And then the other thing we need to take care to look for is that these three teeth on the adjustment ring line up with the respective three notches on the base ring. This can be kind of hard to see, but it's easy to do when you follow these directions. Put the serrations, any point of the serrations, over the detent and hover it there with your hand. And then pull the micro adjustment arm to about six, seven o'clock. No, more like seven, eight o'clock. You tell me there's, you wanna hover, rotate to about that position. And at this position, the three teeth on the adjustment ring are lining up with the three notches in the base ring. And so it will seat all the way down there. And the way I can make sure it's seated is I keep applying pressure and I rotate it and you can hear the positive detent sound clicking. That means my adjust rings all the way down and I can see it's all the way down around the sides. So to lock it into position, I push on the micro adjustment arm in a counterclockwise direction and I bring it to the front of the machine. At this point, the adjustment ring is locked down into position. You can see I can pick up the grinder by it. It's ready to go. After your adjustment ring is installed, you want to put back on your safety switch. This is an interlock switch, and it sits on these two posts. Make sure your adjustment ring is rotated all the way counterclockwise. It must be in this position for the burr and hopper to remove or install. Now we have our gearbox reassembled with GB 2.0. We have it reattached to our chassis. We've plugged back in our motor, reinstalled our adjustment ring. We have the clicking detent sound. We're ready to put our case on and give it a try. So to put the case on the grinder, slide it on as far as it goes just by wiggling it back and forth. And then you can see if you look down in the micro adjustment slot, the micro adjustment arm coming up. You can see that it will be going into that slot if I push the case on more. Make sure that looks happily lined up. I have to face it to me for this step. And then you push down on it until it goes. At this point you can see the casing is as flush as it gets against the base. And more importantly, you can see that it's equally spaced all around the bottom. This tells me the case is all the way installed. First thing before we forget is to reinstall our micro adjustment knob. The best way to do this is to get something thin, like a, I'm using a number zero screwdriver. Earlier I was using the screwdriver on my pocket knife, it was a thin blade. You need something that can go in here and support the bottom of the arm. That's because I'm going to put this knob on, oopsies, I'm going to put the knob on and I want to pull up with the screwdriver while I'm pressing down with the knob to make sure it gets on there as tightly as possible. Let's see here if I can show you. So I'm not pulling up very hard on the screwdriver. It's more there just to brace it from going down when I push on it. I push it down into place and then sweep it back and forth. I can feel it clicking through the detents. It will also go into positions between the detents but it tells me the knobs all the way on. Check that your pulse button is clicking. If your pulse button is not clicking, it's a really quick and easy fix. Just push up on the black casing right here and it will align it happily. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and put the grinder back together. Take your upper burr and we're gonna reinstall it. The upper burr has a red dot on one of the tabs on the top. 
This red dot lines up at five o'clock in the mouth of the grinder with a rectangular cutout in the black adjustment ring. Go ahead and drop your upper burr in. You can hear it kind of click into place. It doesn't actually snap into place, but it does settle down in there when it's installed correctly. And you can see that the red dot is lined up with a black rectangular hole in the adjustment ring at about five o'clock. Next, we're gonna put on our silicon gasket. On the narrow side of the silicon gasket, you can see two rectangular cutouts. These two cutouts fit over the two tabs that are on top of the upper burr holder, one of which is red. So go ahead and work the gasket around and push it into position till it's mounted on top of the upper burr. Now we're ready to go ahead and install the hopper. So the hopper installed easily in this instance, but there is sometimes scenarios where your hopper will not want to install. I'll replicate that here. So I go to install the hopper and you can see it, it almost sits down, but it's not fully seated and it is unable to engage the adjustment ring. That's because the adjustment ring isn't in the zero position right now. And to fix that is very easy. You just look inside the grinder and there are two bumps, two rectangular blocks on the black adjustment ring. These are what the hopper engage with its two notches in the bottom of the hopper. And the, they have to be in the proper position for the unit to assemble. This black clicking adjustment ring must be rotated all the way counterclockwise for the hopper burr, the hopper or the upper burr to remove or install. If your hopper is not installing, make sure that black adjustment ring is clicked all the way counterclockwise until it stops. The two rectangular black blocks should be at about 12 and 6 o'clock. So now I've ensured that it's all the way counterclockwise. I can go ahead and stretch my rubber gasket around it once again, and the hopper will happily install. Thanks for watching.